Welcome back, Sardiners and Sardinettes, to another episode of How Good Are Them Anchovies and or Sardines? As we talked about before in previous episodes, the difference is feel free to revisit some of the older episodes if you don't know the difference between anchovy and sardines, um, or the, frankly, the, the variants of the term sardines. Um, as there's a lot of good info in some of those previous ones, including the the two Nuri episodes. Um, you may be wondering to yourself, oh, wow, this channel's still alive? The Sardiner's still alive? In fact, the Sardiner is thriving because this angler eats a crap ton of sardines to this day. Not as much, unfortunately, but I do seek to uh, re-enter that facet of my life because, frankly, life is better with a can of sardines in you. Uh, and that's just true in every facet. Taste, size, health, um, overall encumbrance, all those sorts of things. So today, I thought I would reach into my cabinet and just pull one out for you nice people who have chosen, for whatever reason, to stick around for two years. And frankly, I believe loyalty should be duly rewarded. And for all of those who you've stuck around, I give... An angler salute to you all and uh, a fresh video hot off the press. So today, you may have seen me flash it a couple times, we have Brunswick boneless butterflied sardine fillets in olive oil with hot peppers. You may be wondering what type of peppers that they are putting in here, as if you don't know, Brunswick is a Canadian company. So we have... Um, Herring and olive oil, likely not first cold press olive oil, but you know what? Honestly, whenever they bother to put olive oil in the can, I try not to complain. If it's you know, as long as it's not sunflower oil or whatever other type of of crap that they try to put in here, I am I'm okay with it. I try not to complain. So we have herring is the actual type of sardine that's in here because. I, you know what? I'll just go into it. So sardine is actually legally a variance of size of fish. It encompasses a slew of different actual species of fish. Um, but when it comes to actually labeling on cans, sardines are not necessarily sardines. Um, while there is the actual fish itself, a sardine... Not every sardine can will contain actual sardines, which is frankly okay because actual sardines themselves are still good. Do not get me wrong. But, you know, other things like herring and the all the other, I can't remember, there's so many different types, good God. Um, herring. Oh, let me pull up a list. I'm trying to think of all of them, but I can't even, let's see sardine types of fish let's see so we have herrings uh smaller kinds of tuna uh there's one with an m that for some reason god help me i cannot pull out of the top of my head let's see so it's 22 species of fish let me see if i can pull up that list for you well <laughs> I have a list of their scientific names, but that's not necessarily helpful, is it? Let's see. Uh, Sardinia. Yeah, that is likely where it came from. Um, let me see if I can... Oh, the PDF does not exist. Okay. Well, that'll be homework for you anglers, sardiners, and sardinettes. That will be the homework for you tonight, is to find that those 22 species of fish. Um, but in any case, the species we have in this tin tonight is, in fact, herring. It is in olive oil, as we discussed, and it is serrano peppers, um, which I don't, I'm, I've, I've heard of, but I can't place where that's from. Serrano peppers, very interesting. Usually it's jalapenos um, or something along those lines. So serrano peppers is interesting. And then the the water and you know some of the liquid inside is water vinegar salt calcium chloride which is to keep things firm so everything doesn't get too soft and just natural flavors 
and this is distributed by Bumblebee Seafoods, which if you have shopped kind of in Walmart or things like that, they, there are actual Bumblebee labeled products. And then there are their subsidiary such as Brunswick and others. Um, and I thought this would be a fun one because personally, I don't, I have not tried the Brunswick brand before. So I thought this would be a really awesome introduction into into this brand. So a little bit about Brunswick. I pulled up their website just so we have a little background because frankly, I think this is a cute little, little tin here. I like this a lot. So it is 125 years old. It comes from a small, the small Canadian village of Brunswick, New Brunswick, excuse me. And it was started by two brothers, Lewis and Patrick Connors. And they basically fed their entire family through the local sardine population. Now, obviously at that point, it's not canned, it'd all be fresh caught, which obviously is awesome. However, as they started to be able to fish more and more and sell the fish off, they came about to having a small fleet of boats. And over 70 years ago, um, when there was a, uh, I'm guessing a hurricane in the West Indies, a natural disaster, I'm assuming it's a hurricane, the, or, or their equivalent kind of storm, um, they started a cannery through charity to send canned sardines to this community. And then they realized once they had this small cannery going that they can just start canning all of their sardines and selling it. And basically over the next uh, 70 years, they've simply grown and grown and grown. Um, and it just seems to be such a wonderful family story. Um, I, I love the fact that their cannery started as, as a means of charity to donate food, you know, cause we always think about, or maybe not always, but we think about, Oh, what can, you know, what can I do to help people? Well, people back then apparently were simply built different because they would start entire canneries just to donate food. What have you done today? Or in the past year, given twenty dollars, so just something to think about. We are as limited in our actions as we choose to be, truly. So, and it's interesting they put their process for how they actually package the sardines. So I'll go over that real quick, just because I think it's interesting. So there's packing, pre-cooking, and you're like, okay, you may think to yourself, very well, I can expect that. But then we get to seaming, retorting, and packaging. Okay, so you may think to yourself, "What the heck is seaming?" So we'll start the we'll start at the beginning. Packing, open can without the lid, right? As we'll we'll open this and we'll show the lid. So they put the the fish into the can with the lid not attached yet. Then they cook it in that tin while it's still unsealed. They will at that point put it into racks and steam it, and that's how they cook it. And then the seaming part is then the, the cooked cans are taken off the racks and placed on a seaming line where the, the sauces, such as the you know olive oil with hot peppers and the other flavorings that they put in there, like the, the salt uh, and the vinegar, will be put in there to... Um, are added to the cans before the sealing. And then the retorting is a high pressure vessel used for cooking and sterilization. And so once once they are put into the, the retort, is actually what the machine is called, a retort, feel free to look it up. That sounds very interesting. They are, the, the cans are removed, drained and cooled before they're handled. And then during the, that stage, the bones of the sardines are greatly softened. So that's why when you eat sardines, you don't, you can't, you know, you're not breaking your teeth or getting stabbed by the bones inside. They're super soft. That's also why you get a crap ton, a super healthy amount of calcium out of sardines is because those bones basically, you know, turn super soft. So you're able to just consume it completely and it's able, 
not only to be absorbed because you know if you eat little bones maybe they can actually damage you a little bit that's why you eat chicken bones and that sort of thing or even regular fish bones if you're eating bigger fish are an issue and you do not want to swallow them that's because they are hard they aren't softened but with these you're able to just chew them up and eat them and it's fully absorbed into your system that's why they are super good sources of calcium among other things and then obviously the last stage is to pack them which is then that is when the lid is put on they are sealed and they are shipped across the world and they are held to three levels of standards their internal standard the canadian food inspection agency standard and the seafood uh hcacc plan which is approved by the u.s food and drug administration and i suppose if they are shipped elsewhere they would be under that those nations um equivalent of the fda uh, inspection policies so that's a little bit about brunswick again i just thought it'd be fun to learn a bit more about them so we'll go ahead and open the can so this is what we got so i will say i do like if you for the people who remember or know what they look like the king oscars and and such where the branding is directly applied to the can um i do like that simply because it's i i find it more endearing or if you for those who have seen the nuri episode I, I i simply find it more in um more endearing um because you know you take off the plastic cover for this and then you're just left with kind of a, a boring tin however what is inside the tin is not boring so let's go ahead and transition to our sardine or the sardine view here perfection so i will then place the can as you can see i have not touched this can in any way so this will be the fresh opening for all you nice people so I will go ahead and attempt to do this without spilling. So as some may remember, uh, the strategy for how to open this can uh, and you know many sardine cans without mess, um, it's a little bit more difficult for me because I want to hold it up to you guys for the camera so you're able to see it very well. So I'm putting it basically at a slight angle here. As you can see, I can basically fit my whole hand under it. So that's why I'm going to open it from this side so that then the oil pools down here so i'm able to more control the flow of it because i do not want it to escape the tin so we're gonna crack it open so as you can see there we are looks good you can see uh, you maybe not be able to see it on the camera too much but you can see the seeds of that serrano pepper especially right here this little uh, brown greenish patch maybe right here above below my finger that actually oops is the looks like little little pieces of the actual pepper right here they've kind of pulled in the middle which is very interesting and then this little bit that just dropped off the tin is actually a whole piece of that pepper it's very soft you know as anything would be canned i'm gonna go ahead and try that mm. it's actually it is pretty soft but i will say it actually still has some structural integrity to it and it's actually wonderful it has absorbed that's that the the sea flavor and i say sea flavor because it's salty it's fishy and such it also has a little bit of the vinegar in there i can taste that and it also still has that spice however the spice is not overwhelming it's actually a very very nice mellow spice i am super interested to see how it has suffused throughout the oil and how deeply the flavor has become homogenous throughout the can so i'm going to walk away just for a second because i see i for actually forgot to grab a fork here However, once we grab a fork, we will be moving forward with this review. 
and the fork has been acquired. As you can see, the Sardiner is respectful. He wears sweatpants. The Sardiner is not a underwear wearer at the desk. He is very professional, as all anglers should strive to be. So we are going to go ahead. We're going to grab a piece. So it is actually surprisingly firm. As you can see, I'm going to jiggle it around. And it's not really falling off. There's that little bit that fell off right there, but that was kind of already falling off already. But as you can see, it's not floppy. It's quite firm. So this is exciting. This I'm going to dunk it in the oil a little bit. Delicious. It's delicious. You know, a lot of people complain about um, fishiness. Um, and that, that definitely comes down to personal taste. You, if you don't like the taste of beef, if you don't like beefiness, you aren't going to like hamburgers. If you don't like the taste of chicken, you're not going to like chicken breast. If you don't like fishiness, you're not going to like fish. Now, there are some people who exist on a sliding scale or a spectrum of, of anti-fish, uh, where they will accept some sorts of fish, but reject other types of fish. And it comes just down to that taste. And it's interesting, what people identify as fishiness is actually just multiple types of fatty acids. So ov obviously everyone knows the, the popular girl, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, but there are several types of fatty acids. Um, however, obviously the most pronounced one um, and certainly the, one of the most healthy ones is the omega-3 fatty acids, but it's, it's that combination and concentration of those different fatty acids in fish that causes that fishy flavor. And certain people, uh, can have an aversion to that. But when it comes to herring, the, I suppose, good thing, um, depending on who you ask about herring is it has a lower concentration, still a very healthy amount. Do not get me wrong. Do not, do not misunderstand. <clears throat> it has a very, uh, it has a lower concentration of that, I mean, of that, uh, not amino acids, uh, omega-3 fatty acid compared to other things such as um, regulars, you know, actual special sardines or mackerel or other such things as that. But herring is lower. So it's a little bit less fishy. Hmm. Why do I say that? Why do I go on that diatribe? Because while yes, this herring tastes like fish, I would not identify it as fishy. Um, not, not in the sense of people, like I was saying, who have that aversion to that fish taste. I would not necessarily identify this as fishy. I will say that the spice has definitely left that pepper and exited into the oil and the fish because I can definitely taste the spice and it, but it's not overwhelming. If you like spice, you would absolutely adore this can and this brand because this is very, very, it's very delicately balanced because it's quite easily to, to oversaturate it with too much pepper. I think the only one, the only can I've had where I've really had that issue was is actually the King Oscar's Jalapeno Olive Oil um, brand. That those cans. Now I don't get me wrong as well. I I do still like King Oscar. I think they're a good brand, a good steady brand. And I still do like the Jalapeno uh, cans. However, they they tend to put multiple multiple cross sections like uh, three or four cross sections into the cans of those sardines and it comes it comes across very strong whereas this is much much more balanced the actual flavor of the fish is it's existent it's existent you can still taste it but it is not overwhelmed by anything. It's very, it, I would say it's similar to the, the Nuri can where 
because of their cooking process, most likely, where they put that oil after the actual cooking of the fish. Because remember that that process where they they put the fish in the can, then they steam it, and then they put the oil, the peppers, and the other flavorings, salt, vinegar, that sort of thing, after. And I think because they do that, probably directly after, because what does steaming do, to those who don't know? Steaming expands the food because it gets things quite hot and it's all water vapor. And so the water vapor inside of meat and of plants or really anything expands, right? Because what does water do? What does gas do as it heats? It expands. So the food expands, which actually makes room for the oil, for the flavors to get into that fish. So the fact that they do it afterward is, is probably quite strategic on their end to have that flavor invade the fish. And I can tell you, it certainly is working. So it looks like, oh, oh, it's actually double packed. I did not notice that. So we actually have quite big fillets of, of herring here. As you can see, um, basically, hmm, I did not really realize that as I was looking at that. So there are actually two fillets in here, one laid on top of each other. I don't know if you can quite see it. I'm going to try and remove it just so it can be seen. Or am I, am I wrong about that? I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually wrong about this. This is actually, unless it's sticking together, this otherwise might be one continuous fillet of herring. Which, frankly, I would be more impressed by because that flavor has so evenly entered the fish. No, it is two. Okay. Okay. It, it is two. Excuse me. This is, this is very good. It, it is two fillets of herring. How do I know that? Because on this side, you can see the skin. So just because you can still see um, that those aren't scales. Scales are different from the skin of fish. You know, scales are the hard keratin um, ovoids surrounding the fish skin. But then once you remove the scales, the skin still remains. So it's it's you got to be careful not to confuse the scales with the skin. The skin is totally fine to eat on fish. There's actually quite a few Asian snacks that are just um, carp skin that is fried, kind of like how in America we will do, you know, pig skin that's fried, pork rinds. They have carp skin that's fried. It's practically the same exact thing, just a different uh, different animal. So I can see the skin on this one, and then I can see the skin on the one underneath. I'm gonna to point to a couple instances of it here and here that I can see. I don't know if you can see it too well on the cam, but I can sure see it here. So that has told me that this is actually two separate fillets of the, of the herring. So I'm gonna try and get through this top one so I can get to the bottom one to see if there's any difference in the flavor between the two. And as you can see, this holds up pretty dang well. Would you look at that? Look at that. That structural integrity is pretty astounding. If you keep in mind that this fish has likely been in this tin for years. For example, I, I checked right before I opened it that this tin expired and, or expires, I should say, in January of 2027. And I purchased this tin most likely in the year of 2021. So the this this tin most likely has been um, closed and sealed for most likely over three years, for almost for sure over three years. 
So when you think about that, that calcium chloride is definitely doing its job because that stays together really well. And it comes apart in a very nice way to where you don't have to pick it apart, but it also you don't get tiny, tiny little pieces that you have to worry about you know, pushing together to make an actual bite. Like right there. Like that, that is a solid piece of meat right there. That is a solid piece of meat. That's a good bite. And I didn't have to fish for that. Here comes another one. That one, that one fell apart. Just, eh, just split in half, didn't fall apart. But here we go. Here's another wonderful bite. Hmm. So yeah, flavor-wise, I would say it is very similar to the tops, the top piece. Now, I think that this bottom piece might be just a tiny bit more spicy because this bottom filet is the one that was actively physically sitting in the olive oil, which, you know, which was containing all of the capsaicin from that serrano pepper. So this, I, I am just, I, I just wanted to grab it to show you, but you see all that skin on this side, all that skin, that's totally safe to eat. There's no scales here. There's no scales here. You can see it peels off a little bit. But that's totally safe to eat and actually quite healthy. Most most things skin, if you're going to consume it, as long as it does not have any, um, uh, let's say, exo, you know, exo hard hardness outside of the body, such as scales, cell walls like plants. Uh, that sort of thing. It's it's quite safe to eat and. Sorry about that, sardiners and sardinettes. Sorry about that, sardiners and sardinettes. We had a mild technical issue of a battery running out, but we are good to go. As I was saying, <coughs> I'm just going to make sure that the sound is still recording people because I would hate to steal this wonderful review uh, from your minds and from your, your near futures. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to give just this big piece here with the skin on it, just a huge bite. Um, ju just to see, I mean, how the texture of that fish changes anything, or the the skin. I apologize. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So the skin, very very smooth. Um, almost like a if you wet a plastic, and how you you know kind of can smooth your your finger over it, um, or kind of like this can with a little bit of oil on it. Very smooth. That's how I would describe that skin. And I will say, I have barely felt the the bones at all. Basically, the moment you put any amount of pressure on the bones, they disintegrate. They completely disintegrate once you put any amount of tooth pressure, bite and bite pressure on the bones. They, they simply disappear. Not even break. They're not even breaking. They're just breaking apart. Um... So you, you barely feel the resistance at all. I will say I am starting to feel a little bit of, of spice at this point. I think it's because we're getting into this oil on the bottom. We are, we are definitely starting to get a little bit more of the spice. Um, and I have kind of actively been looking around for more pieces of that Serrano pepper but I'm not really seeing it. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's a, of how much they really put in here. Oh, here we go. Here's another little piece, as you can see with a little bit of fish on it. I'll take the fish off, but here's another piece of that Serrano pepper. 
So as you can see, when it comes to canning, and maybe if, if you want to seek canning as a hobby or even pickling, I would say start with pickling first because that is much easier to start off with than canning. Um, you do not need a lot of that flavoring to get um, the flavor out into the can. Uh, you, you've seen how much of that serrano pepper they put in here. It's really tiny little pieces, but it, they, they sit in the can so long that they completely diffuse their flavor throughout the entire can. So you don't need a lot of, of those spices and those sorts of things in the cans themselves to get that return of flavor back. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I have no complaints at all. That is a good can of sardines. And very, very nice fillets of herring, I will say. Brunswick, I absolutely loved the the fillets of, of, of herring. Because what can happen a lot, <clears throat> what can happen a lot is that those fillets are really, really small or they get they just get kind of brutalized if they're not if they're not placed well but i can i can tell brunswick that those fillets are placed very carefully perhaps by hand um if you if if the if it is automated i would say hats off and um you know really really hats off to your mechanical engineers that designed that automation because those fillets were not brutalized beaten broken in any way they really held together very well and that that i think is a, a clear show of that process in action uh and, and the success of it i would say clearly um I, I would definitely recommend this specific can and I, I am interested in trying other Brunswick products, um, seeing maybe if they have other sardine cans, not necessarily uh, herring fillets, but, you know, more true sardines head on, of course, as everyone should. Um, and yeah, frankly, a, a great can of, of sardines. Um, so we'll go ahead and readjust the camera back up. And there we are. We're back in we're back in playtime. So you may be thinking to yourself, wow, we're already at the end. And that's okay because at, at the end of the day, you know, if you think about it, there will only be so many sardiner videos. I will only eat so many cans of sardines in total. We only have so much time on this earth to consume sardines and to consume sardine content. But that's okay, because in the words of Dr. Seuss, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. You may have never found the wonderful, wonderful taste, texture, and health benefits of sardines. You may have lived your entire life simply never knowing the wonderful nature of these little fish, but you do. And you're here right now. We're here together, having a great time, ruminating and in wonderment of a great can of sardines by a wonderful little company named Brunswick. And you know what? That's a beautiful thing. Don't let nihilism take it over. Because at the end of the day, you could never have had a can of sardines in your life. Now, I hope that this inspires you to go grab your nearest can of sardines and consume it voraciously. Because frankly, we all need a little bit more omega-3 fatty acids in our lives and in our bodies. And sardiners, frankly, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope all of you have wonderful days, weeks, and months to come. Because frankly, who knows? The sardiner has to go back out on the waters he has to go out and live his life as well. But don't worry. The tides always push your boy back in. 
and I will see you on the next one. Have a good one, everyone. I love you all.